Sudan, the largest country in Africa and home of the world's longest running and least publicized civil war, which has claimed more lives than in Bosnia, Rwanda, and Kosovo combined. Since its military coup in 1989, the Islamic fundamentalist ruling party has been trying to win control of the non-Muslim South, where major oil reserves are being developed with Russian, Chinese, and Canadian partners to help finance the country's staggering debt. Caught in the middle are the Nubas, a mix of Christians, animists, and traditional Muslim tribespeople in plateaus of central Sudan and who are culturally and politically aligned with their neighbors in the south. Isolation. Uh, this is our major problem. Isolation by the international community. Isolation due to the policies of uh, the regime of Khartoum. They have been bombarding the, 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 the civilian targets. Uh, they have been planting landmines. Uh, they've been uh, uh, dropping cluster bombs. Makram Gassis is an exiled Sudanese bishop operating the Nubas only and very tenuous lifeline from his base in nearby Kenya. While the major relief organizations have been allowed to operate in the south, Bishop Gassis has had to resort to secret flights into the Nuba Mountains, which have been cut off by government troops and warplanes. The combination of the military blockade and famine have devastated the Nubas. They have lost nearly a third of their people in the past decade. The gap between hunger and famine, I would say that's when you know, the, the human body just deteriorates so much over a period of months that physically now you cannot go out. And I think that's the problem is that you say it always comes too late because people say, oh, well, these people are not thin, you know, they're not, they're not starving, they're all right. And yet suddenly it all just falls apart. This video is from the documentary, The Hidden Gift, which was taken on Bishop Gassis's Christmas at Easter relief missions in 1998 and 99, when the Nubas literally scraped the relief plane clean of food supplies before delivering them to outlying areas. While celebrating a Christmas mass of Thanksgiving, the bishop was interrupted by an intercepted radio report claiming the government was planning to bomb the villages he was visiting. I was really disturbed. And I'm just wondering why, when we pray for peace, we find war. When we, we pray for reconciliation, we find hatred. Later that Christmas day, while returning to his base camp, the bishop's party again had to take cover as government planes attacked a nearby village. On February 8th this year, government bombs fell on one of the bishop's outdoor classrooms in the village of Kauda, killing 14 students and their teacher. To oppress people, to kill people in the name of a religion, in the name of God. What kind of image of God are we, are we reflecting? When I speak about what is happening there, I say this regime of Islamic fundamentalists in Sudan. I did not say Islam. The bishop's mission also includes the Dinka, who have been forced to relocate because of their Christian beliefs. Some have been forcibly resettled in government camps and converted to Islam. Others, like this boy, have been sold into slavery to work in areas controlled by the Muslim fundamentalists. These are marked like cattle. As a child being taken from his own homeland to be taken there and being brainwashed, at the end of the day, he comes in peace. Unlike Biafra, where pictures of children with famine-swollen bellies quickly galvanize worldwide support and the live aid concerts, or the extensive news coverage of Rwandan refugee camps, the Nubas have remained very much out of sight and out of mind to privately suffer what African rights organizations are calling the worst case of government-fostered genocide on the continent. Maybe when the people of the Nuba are finished, then they may come up again and say, if we had done something, these people might not have been finished from the, the, the map of the world. God created us all free. He did not give anybody 
the right to deprive people of their of their life of their religion of their culture of their tradition we are not slaves and yet we are still alive nobody came to rescue us except few people since most of the major relief organizations are restricted by the Sudanese government from operating in the Nuba Mountains, Bishop Gassis has had to mount his own relief efforts based out of Nairobi. His chief priorities are building new schools, digging new wells, and flying in food and medicine as frequently as he can. His next relief mission is scheduled for this Christmas.